today I'll come out here to give you my top tips for using panning techniques for birds in flight. For those of you who don't know, panning is basically moving along with the subject as it's moving. And the idea is to use a very slow shutter speed and then blur out the background and trying to capture at least part of that animal sharp. I'll come out here to do birds in flight. If you want to target a specific species, go where that species is. If not, go somewhere to practice where there's just a lot of birds about. Now, my main target here is the oyster catchers that are kind of hanging about on a little pier here. But there's other stuff about, and I'm not picky, I'll take whatever I can get. And I just had an Egyptian goose fly by here, so that's what you can hear there. You can do panning shots whenever you want, but what I often like to do is using panning when there's low light. So basically before sunrise, maybe after sunset, you really get some cool colors as well then. So you can really create something unique. And very often at that time, you can not take your normal images that you require a higher shutter speed for that anyways. Think about your background. Now, you can't just pick anything. You know, you can't have a white sky as a background. It needs to be something that can be blurred as a background. You know, very often a bit more colorful is really cool. I'm really going for these uh, reflections on the still water here, getting a bit of the vegetation from the, uh, from the hills in the back, or maybe some of the blue sky, creating these streaks of color behind the birds in flight here. Set your shutter speed. You could use shutter speed priority. I'm usually in full, full manual and what shutter speed you want to be at can vary. It depends. Uh, a little bit of faster shutter speed can be easier to get some sharp animals, but a slower shutter speed and you'll create more of a streak in the background. You know, it really depends on the proximity of the animals as well. So a little bit of trial and error is good. Right now, I've been shooting a lot at a 13th of a second, which is quite slow, but I'm really liking the effect that I'm getting from it. Now, the slower your shutter speed, basically the more streak you're going to get in your background. But there's other things that affect that as well, such as the focal length that you're using, the speed of the animal, and the distance to the background. For focusing point, if it's small birds, I like one in the middle. Uh, if it's a little bit larger birds, or if they're a little bit closer, I like one in the middle with four around it. Actually though, on my EM1X, I'm finding the auto bird tracking really useful for this. If you want to find out more about how I set up my Olympus for padding photography, I'll release a video next week on that, so I'll put a link to that here and you can check it out if you're on the Olympus system. You're going to really be at a burst mode as well, so you can fire off several frames as the bird flies by and actually just increasing your chances of getting one of them decent. Number six, if your gear has vertical image stabilization, turn that on, which basically means that it won't correct for horizontal movements, which we use when we pan, but it will adjust when you vibrate up and down, which can be really useful for padding shots. Uh, if it doesn't have that though, just turn your image stabilization to off. Because if not, your camera is just going to try and adjust and very often you won't get that blurry background that you're going for. Quite like that. Number seven, you wanna try and get focus on the birds as early as you can, long before you're actually gonna take your shots and then follow it through. 
Number eight, keep yourself and your camera as steady as possible and you want to have free movement around you. And when you follow the bird, move your whole body like this. Don't just move your hands. It will be a lot steadier if you move your entire body with it. Now, in the beginning, I wouldn't worry too much about composition, but after you've given a little bit of practice, you might want to think about trying to compose your image as well as you're panning. So after you've had some practice, think about composing your image as well. If you have a flock of birds, which I often have here with the oyster catchers, every now and then I'll try and peek up and I'll try and pick out one individual to focus on. And using the rules of odds, you might want to focus on one, three, five, maybe even seven birds. That can really stand out. It usually makes for a really nice composition. Have those odd number of animals in your frame. When you get a higher than seven though, it's just going to be many. Which also can be good to, to photograph a whole group of birds as they fly by. You just got to test a little bit. It's good to get a little bit of space between the individuals if you can. For composition you also want to think about rules of thirds and you know in the beginning I would say just get the bird in the center because it's easier to focus on then but if you've been doing it for a bit you may want to try and put it off center and usually for you know for birds in flight you might want to think about empty space in front and then putting the bird on the back rule of third maybe up or down depending on what else is in your frame. You want to set your focus point beforehand for that using something like the bird tracking on the M1X is actually quite good because I can move the camera around and it will usually keep focus on the bird in the frame. After you've been photographing for a little bit, I like to flick through my images and just see actually where my background looks better. Very often you'll have something more colorful or something that creates a streaky effect, something you really like, and then maybe try and incorporate that in more of your images, aiming that direction and capturing the birds as they fly in front of that better background. Don't get frustrated because everybody has low keeper rights as this, especially in the beginning. It is tough to do and rarely will you actually get a shot that you like. So bring loads of empty SD cards because you're going to use up a lot of space on them and taking loads of images that you're just going to have to throw away. But every now and then when you get that really cool shot, it makes it all worth it. If you want more tips on capturing birds in flight, I have a video on that already so go check that out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.